What's going on, man? This is Let's Be Frank, man. My brother, my brother, my brother. Truth as I know it, man. I, uh, I'm making you this private video, man. You, uh, you kicked my ass this morning, brother, with that video. But before I get off into that, let me begin by saying, brother, I, uh, sent you that PayPal, man, so you can continue your work, my brother, because the only way the manosphere, the brothers in the manosphere, the brothers of this awakening to keep this alive is just not through their participation, but through their financial participation as well. So brother, take that, and as I get more, I'm going to send you what I can. Go ahead, shout your brother out, so that these other brothers will have a name to know that, hey, that, 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 that monetary faith is being put behind your message. has been blowing up the manosphere has been blowing up and i love it i'm here for it i see people's views going through the roof their subscriber counts are blowing up it's getting higher and higher and higher and i love to see it and i'm here for it and i'm back i'm back homeboy i am back <laughs> Let's get it. Yo, if you like this video, thumbs up the video. Go ahead and like that. Share the video. Comment. If you like the video, comment. If you like my channel, uh, I got my Cash App link in the description. You can donate to the Cash App to support the channel so I can keep bringing you Fire, nigga. amazing content. Steve on the East Coast. What's I, up, I man? I want to see this Manosphere blow up. I want to be a part of it. I want my channel to grow. So I'm here for you, man. So let's just hop into this. Because, boy, let me tell you, man. There sure, there sure is a lot of modern black women, a whole lot of modern women that are proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're having an existential crisis. And many of them are doing it right on Kevin Samuel's show. You can see it, like more and more women are starting to question their existence when it comes to their family structure. Right, Nip Dog, what up, homie? That's what we mean by existential crisis. What's that root word? Existence. Exist, right? Existential crisis. Peace, dude. We love you, fam. Exist crisis. Women are starting to really panic and, and the mask comes off and then they don't like what they see. Ah! And they're like, oh, this is horrible. That's, that's kind of what we're seeing on the show. They're having this crisis when it comes to their own family structure. Shout out to Dwayne Jr. Right? When it comes to the typical modern black woman, West Jr., we see you, too fam. many of these women are having kids out of wedlock or they're having kids Knowledge. Thank you, late in life. And this can be an issue. I mean, when you have kids out of wedlock, we know the data, we know um, how that can put kids at risk. And I'm not here to beat up on kids out of like wedlock. That's not what it's about. Big money, bad. Whoa. Well, what it's about is recognizing that the family structure in the black community, as is, this causes suffering for black women themselves. I miss Gab Talk Media. It causes suffering for black men. And most importantly, and worst off, is it causes suffering for black <clears throat> for black children shout out to kevin motherfucking now Samuels. we talk about kevin samuels but we know he didn't start this cultural restructuring if that's what we want to call it he didn't he didn't start this exposure of this existential crisis but at the moment he's the figurehead he's the spokesperson right now and hopefully in time he's just going to seem like a grain of sand on the beach where there's many 
different outlets, many different Kevin Samuels, many different men and women who speak about the black family structure in ways that can help repair it. Because most black men, we want to be family men. We want to get married in, ideally, an ideal situation, anywhere between, you know, 24 and 37, roughly. And we'd like to meet women that are in between the ages of, you know, maybe 21 and 29. And we get married in a happy, healthy, functioning, loving, loving marriage where she's cooperative, submissive, and agreeable. Tell them how we don't want a doormat. Yet she's strong-willed and confident and has high aptitude and high character and high integrity. And we both have very similar core values and we go out into this world with a shared vision and a plan and a family plan and we build together with our children all in the same home and we have an amazing life together that's what most black men want a chocolate wife just like in this video but we know that modern women want something different than what black men want baby mama is they want something different and i think bring up the redemption story why that is because there's a, redempti a redemption story in the black community. It's like the hero's journey. There's a redemption story for black men and there's a redemption story for black women. And they're both different, but they both sort of operate the same way. It's a story that we tell ourselves about ourselves and then we live it out. And for black men, basically that redemption story means that you fuck up early and get better later in life. Black men or young black boys and we're raised and by a single mother and Life was tough and we struggled. And even if guys don't, weren't, even if they weren't raised by a single mother, they could still be raised in a two parent home. Many of us still live in a two parent, uh, a single parent home community. So we still get sucked into this narrative. And even furthermore, a lot of, you know, black people are raised in the suburbs by two, two, two black parents. Slow down, and homie. even still, they get sucked into this, this redemption story this redemption narrative and again let me continue is that this redemption narrative is about a black man embracing the struggle of what it means to be black oh i was raised by a single mom in in the hood and we didn't have nothing and then i got into gangs or i got into crime or maybe i got into violent crime i sold dope maybe i went to jail maybe i went to prison i had some kids out of wedlock you know i was you know i was just causing problems and i wasn't the best version of myself but then you know, I got into a trade or, I, you know, I got my life together. I went to college and then, you know, I, I became a better man. I became a better father. I, better, I became a better uh, earner, a better career man. I, I was more focused in my life. And then I come back to the community and I come back to, to the hood and I help out and I give back. We need to get it right the first time. And that's this redemption story, sort of like the hero's journey. Sim very similar to the hero's journey where you're reluctant to do things right the first time you go no no i'm not ready for that and you kind of let things crumble at first and then you're called then then you come back later now black women have their own redemption story uh -oh. and it looks a little bit different it operates a little different but it really has very similar results and black females redemption story is you know very similar i was raised by a single bomb we didn't have nothing i was raised in the hood and i had tumultuous relationships with with black men and you know and and it just didn't work out and man it wasn't shit and they just didn't treat me right so i you know i ended up having you know either you have kids out of wedlock or maybe she was a teen mom that's pretty rare you don't see that many teen moms anymore but or maybe she became a baby's mama she's 23 years old but she had the kid out of wedlock so she's you know she's the baby's mama and she wasn't getting along with the baby's father and you know maybe she wasn't that focused on her career either so then she went and got, uh, you know, she went and got her degree. She went to college and then she got career back together. And then, or maybe she actually didn't have kids. She, maybe she didn't have kids when she was young, but she waited till after college. This could be the redemption story for women. That this too could be the redemption story for women. But instead of having kids before school and then struggling through college, they go to college and then have kids afterwards, still having kids out of wedlock because of course, you know, black men are difficult. And they, you know, they, all the good black men are either dead or in jail. And, you know, he just walked away from the family and they tell the, you know, they have this whole narrative of why black men, why they shouldn't get married before having kids. Everything's it tends it was an accident. I didn't mean for it to happen. We thought it was gonna work out. Baby mommyism. 
over marriage. And then they get, you know, become, you know, they're, they're in their 30s now, and then they're serious about finding a husband. And part of this black female redemption story is having grown kids. Maybe kids are even out of the house. They're a senior in high school, a junior in high school, and they're filling out college applications. And the kid's mother is single, and now she's looking for a husband when the kid could have had a husband living in the home 20 years ago. Ooh, girl, I see gray hair. And this really creates suffering for black women, for black men, and again, for most importantly, and worse off, for black children. You don't want the biological father in the home with your sons? God damn. We live it out. We live out this God redemption damn. story. You know what black and this men creates an existential crisis in you modern know what women. We go through. And we've figured this out. The black manosphere has figured this out. We've crowdsourced information. Shout out to PTS. We got PhDs in this space. We've got scholars. We got analysts. Shout out to Sergeant Willie P. Together, you know, just it, you know, it's just like all of us, myself and 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 Edward and Grinch and BGS and Roger and Dr. Gigi and and you know the guys before us, like you know, Manosphere 1.0. There's so many guys. I don't. I don't even be mentioning names because I don't want to leave anybody out but you know together every single one of us the content creators the commenters the guys who get on panels uh even before any of us uh you know Shir you know Sharad Ali Shiraz Harad how do you say her name Ali her uh, Dr. Fred Francis Fest what Dr. Francis Crest Wellesley I mean all of us have crowdsourced this information together and we've unpacked you know sort of like forensic sociologists where we've psychoanalyzed black men and black women and the black family structure and how it all interact interacts as a culture and, and interacts as a culture within the environment. They prefer baby mommyism. And what we've discovered is that, you know, over marriage. What black men want is families, but most of us overwhelmingly want to be black family men. And that's why when that CDC report came out, that said that non-custodial black fathers, meaning black fathers who don't live with his kid with their kids, are by far more active in their child's life than other non-custodial dads. You have to understand that most black men are non-custodial. They don't live with their children. Most don't. And that stuff, that's frightening. That should be, that should send chills down your spine because most black, because black boys and black girls, especially black boys are at risk when they don't live with their fathers. After everything that we go through and the, the threats that we face in this environment and black boys overwhelmingly don't get to live with their fathers, that's, that is a horrible, don't go there, situation. And what we've discovered, you know, there was this, previous prevailing thought that black men were deadbeat dads and were leaving black women and leaving the black family and walking away and when that cdc report said that black men are the are the most active and most involved fathers it validated everything that we already knew because we didn't like that reputation black men we already had our existential crisis when you know they say we're criminals and drug dealers and gang members and we you know and we were uh you know we're, we're walking away from the black family we said fuck that shit we're gonna change that reputation and we changed that reputation now we're known for being great dads we're known for being great family men and this is why you start to see you know you see all these women go out in public you'll see you these women running up to you asking for your phone number jumping in your lap all up in your face coming at you aggressive so we've destroyed this this narrative that black men were deadbeat dads you know, and another prevailing thought was that black women were the most loyal of all women. And they just couldn't find a good black man because we were either, all the good black men were either dead or in jail. All these innocent, all these good, innocent men were in jail or had been murdered. And we've discovered that's just simply not true. It's not, it's not true that they're the most loyal. Just because you don't interracially date doesn't mean you're the most loyal. What's loyal about having the lowest marriage rates and the highest divorce rate? Because if they were truly the most loyal, they would be more interested in marriage and two-parent homes and happy, successful, functioning, healthy homes with black men. And because of baby mamaism, y'all deadbeat dads, I can be the mama and the daddy. Niggas ain't shit. I'm strong and independent. What about black love? Y'all just want white girls. The just simply the information that the black manosphere has aggregated together says something different than the narrative that we've heard for the last 60 years. And part of that is... Um, 
part of that this information is you know they say oh the number one threat to to black america the number one threat to black men is white supremacy that's that's another thing that's been destroyed we know that's not true right we know that's not true what's what's true is that black women don't want black men the way we thought they did we we come to discover black, that black women don't want black men the way that they said that they did we know that they're not the most loyal they don't got to be the most loyal. and we know that the black family structure is a much bigger problem than white supremacy but come on fam this is out of control the point is is that it's out of control black women are rejecting black men come on fam in in mass in mass if you as a black man shouldn't want to get married first and then have children it shouldn't be this hard to get a black wife it's going to be harder to do that with a black woman than probably any other woman in america for you the statistics bear that out and i'm not saying that as an attack on anybody i'm saying that's reality i'm trying to to illustrate reality for what it is those are simply the facts if a black man wants to have a black family and have kids have get married before you have kids good luck going to the Ados tribe because that's not what we do that's not what the want, women want to do and that causes an existential crisis because it doesn't work for them too because you know i mean you know how it is <laughs> you know how it is at that end of that road they go on kevin samuel's show they're 35 years old they're looking for a rich man to close out the last leg of that redemption story and those men and those men aren't there even if they're willing there's just not enough of them but i think the point here is that i'm trying to make is that what black men want is they we want marriage first then we want kids for most of us and we want a happy healthy functioning home and what the what a lot of black men will say even in, a, in in almost all black women will say this is they'll say they'll go well the reason that black men don't want black women is because you know they say we're fat they say you know black men say black women are fat or it's because there's kids by other men and you know kids out of wedlock where it's the bad attitude and all that makes them less prone to be sought after for marriage less undesirable and it's like that's obviously true of course yeah black men do, are struggling to marry black women because of obesity because of kids out of wedlock because of attitudes that does make anybody less sought after for marriage it, it makes anybody less desirable but i think the way that narrative is being told is actually backwards because the reality is that black women are following a narrative a script of being strong and independent that I can be the mama and the daddy. That I don't need a man. That I don't need a husband. And therefore, they've got to reject. And in order and for them to reject a so so they reject a black husband and their baby's father because they are playing out this narrative. They're playing out this redemption story. It's not so much that black men don't want black women because they're big and have attitudes or you know and because they have kids that's not what it is what the narrative really is is that modern women have this script this tape this narrative that they're playing out in real life that they want to be a single mother they're embracing baby mamaism and so part of that is of course you're going to have kids with a man out of wedlock you're going to have kids unmarried that's what it means to be a baby's mom and in order to do that, you have to reject men. You have to reject your own femininity. And in order to reject your own femininity, that means that you're going to put on weight. It means that you're going to communicate with toxic, toxic sassiness. It means that you're going to wear your hair in hairstyles that your men don't like. It means that you're going to do things to reject men the women are rejecting the men so that's why there's they you see this toxic sassiness this is why you see women wear weave and now bonnets you see the bonnet br brigade those are basically symbols of of a crown of defiance so they're signaling to you when you see the weave when you see the crowns of defiance and many women not all of course not all but many women these are crowns of defiance they're sassing you because they're letting you know that they're not interested in marriage with you they don't go 
I'm not interested in marriage with you. I just want you to get me pregnant and then we're going to break up. No, they don't say that. They don't say those words, but that's why they sass you because that's what's going to happen. Putting on the weight, having the bad attitude, wearing the weave, having kids out of wedlock. That's part of the process of rejecting black men. They don't let you marry them. You can't marry them. They don't want to get married. You say, we want you more feminine. They can't be more feminine feminine, or they can't get what they want. And that's to be single moms. And this creates an existential crisis. Again, it's not that black men aren't checking for black women. It's that black women are going out of their way to reject black men. And we're finding that the modern woman is comfortable in the dysfunction. At least they were before COVID. So when Kevin Samuels has his shows and he comes around, the women come on his show, he personifies the last leg of the redemption story. He personifies the white knight, you know, in shining armor on the white horse who saves the day. Oh, I want a rich man who makes multiple six figures and he'll take on me and my kids and I won't have to work or maybe I have a part-time job or, you know, I'll do real estate part-time. You know, raise my kids and, and I'll be me and he'll love me and he'll save me. And then Kevin shatters their worldview. And that's where you start to see that existential crisis. So they go, what? I'm not good enough? I'm too big? You're saying my kids are an issue? You're saying that this weave and this bonnet I'm wearing, this, this throat tattoo? What? Come on, Kev, you can't be serious. See, Kevin's not saying anything different than other men have said in the black manosphere, but the women are listening because he represents and he symbolizes the end of the redemption story, the most important part of the re redemption story, where the women are saved by rich men, a rich man who can make their life easier after a tough struggle in life. And this is what this is why you see the black, of course, why you see black men so upset with Russell Wilson, because that's what he symbolizes. Nobody is upset with Russell Wilson personally because he married Sierra and he's raising those kids. It's not like people are really upset with him. But what that does is it sends a message through culture that this is what other women can expect, that this is this is socially acceptable, socially responsible behavior that black elite black men are partaking in. So if they're doing that, then less successful men can expect, we can expect that they can do that. They're gonna do the same thing, bingo. Which brings me to Boyce Watkins. He's got a PhD from Syracuse University, or at least he taught at Syracuse University. A PhD in finance, and that says something. And he, you saw him, did you see him when he proposed to his woman and he drops on one knee and he's like babe you were the most beautiful woman that i ever met and you could just see his own personal redemption story his black male redemption story pull his spill out right there on the screen and he looks her in the eyes tears flowing down his face he goes well, this is the first place this is where we went on our first date together so i brought you back here to propose because the first time I saw you, when I took you here, you were the most beautiful woman that I had ever seen before. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever known. And it didn't work out and you rejected me. and You got married to a different man and kids with another man. But now you're mine and you're here and we're, and I'm gonna propose to you in the exact same spot where we went the first time before you dumped me. And he gets on one knees with tears dropping on his shirt because he's crying so much and he gets on one knee and proposes and the woman didn't even say yes she never really said yes he he he, he had to go oh well, i guess i guess that's a yes i think that's a yes <laughs> he, he filmed it and she didn't say yes and you know what she say oh absolutely boys absolutely and you just see her body language and the phrases she, he was using and just you know you see her body language she was she was just she was like i'm better than you and you need to get you on your knees and grovel to marry me anybody gets anybody with two two eyes could see how she was posturing against him and then for her not to say yes i accept your proposal i would love to marry you boys she didn't say any of that she just agreed with him absolutely boys 
And part of that is because he's, you know, he's a, a nerd. He's not that handsome. He's kind of pudgy. And he's pro-black. He wants a black family. He wants a black wife like all, you know, most all of us want. But he wasn't able to get it the way he wanted it. But that was part of his redemption story. To see Kevin Samuels and the rest of us in the manosphere, we don't believe in that. We know that that's a dead end road, that that's not feasible, that that's not going to work long term for, for black men or black women, and most certainly not the black family structure that doesn't work for children. So when Kevin Samuels, when he responds with a defiant tone to these women, and he offers a cold dose of reality to modern women, he shatters these women's worldview right there on the spot with 20, 30,000 viewers. And it, it's hilarious. And these women, they come to discover that they've been living a lie and that there's a good chance that they won't get what they want out of life. But black men, we know what we want. And today's Father's Day. That's today's Father's Day. So let's let's pivot a little bit and focus in on, on black men. Because in the black manosphere, most of us want to be black. We, we want black families. We we want to be fathers. Even if we can't get a black a Eidos woman, we'll you know we'll settle for a non-Eidos black woman. We can't, you know, some of us will, some of us will get, you know, a non-black woman, non-African woman. But most of us want to be married. We want to have children. But overwhelmingly, most black men want to aid those black women. And so, no matter what we talk about her, at the at the at the end of at the end of the road, at the end of all these roads, is that Ados black woman. Because that's what black men want. Shout out to Grinch. We want, like the man in this video, we want, I mean, you know probably want a nicer house and we probably you know maybe we want more you know we want more money than what we're seeing in this video but this is just some video this isn't you know it's not perfection but we want that love we want that nurturing we want to you know be be in the home with our families and most black men just can't get that we just can't get that and what the black men what the black manosphere should do is yield our sword in a way where we help make that a reality where we make this video a reality for men like reflect the future for what black culture is all about and so in the black spanish here you know a lot of times you hear guys say well we don't need to save these women we you know we don't need to you know we don't need to try to help them out we don't need to try to change their minds this the this space is about helping black men and I get that. I mean, I get, I get the logic, but I don't necessarily agree with it because black men overwhelmingly want black women, Eidos women in particular, and they're not really going to be happy unless they get it. And unless women get their, get a, you know, a psychological adjustment and get their head straight, then black men, then they're never going to get what they want. So at the end of all these roads is this Eidos modern woman that black men want. So in that way, helping black women is helping black men. Talking to and about black women is helping black men. Getting black women on the same page as black men is helping black men. And some say it's a lost cause. It could be. Some say they betrayed us and they don't deserve us to try to fix things. I think there's a legit point there. I don't think that's without merit. Some guys say it's simping to try to fix things. I go, man, trying to fix things is that's, that's simping, man. You're just simping. And it is kind of simping a little bit. I mean, you know, if they stab you in the back and it's a lost cause and they don't, des you know, they don't deserve you, that you're trying to fix things, that it, you do got a little simping in your pen. I, I would agree with that. So let's just say all that's true, that, you know, there's good reason not to try to fix things or that we can or that they don't deserve it. If we say, we can say that that's all true. But at the end of that road, where I, what I see is black men are still left without what they truly want. So I, in my opinion, as the black manosphere grows and we grow in numbers, we should also grow our, con our content in ideas. 
and maybe we don't necessarily have what we want right now but i tend to tend to think you know the roger report is headed in the right direction where you set the table for what we want we talk about what we want maybe we talk about things we talk about the future today because this space is about helping black men and i we know what black men want and if we truly want to see black men happy then we have to do what it takes and we need to hold, keep holding up that mirror to the modern women and let them know that we recognize your existential crisis and you wouldn't be having that crisis if you would give black men what they wanted part of the modern women's existential crisis is that they're holding the black family hostage they're holding black love hostage they're holding black marriage hostage don't you find that interesting that it's always called black love and not black marriage black men shouldn't even open their mouth ever again not a day not ever again should a black man ever repeat the words black love we should only say black marriage we should only say submissive wives cooperative wives agreeable wives sub feminine wives make women compete if they those women won't compete for you black man because you're valuable and you get yes, yourself a non ados woman and you marry her and have a beautiful happy functional thriving healthy family with a non ados woman anywhere around the globe software over hardware if you have to because you deserve to get to have a family you deserve a family by a, a submissive woman who loves the shit out of you loves the shit and is loyal to you and your family and her children and your family legacy you deserve all that black man don't let these women who are having an existential crisis stop you from starting a family black man find yourself a submissive cooperative agreeable fit feminine wife and start a family for yourself